video, I'll be showing you how to use triple integrals and cylindrical coordinates to find the volume. Instead of the typical 3D Cartesian coordinate system, we will be using the cylindrical coordinate system to simplify the integration process. This can be especially helpful to solve the volume of cylindrical shells or a solid with a round base like a paraboloid that is bounded by z-bounds. We will be partitioning some region D into cylindrical wedges formed by the sides in the change in R r times the change in theta and the change in z in the coordinate directions. Similar to the way we derive the double integral with polar coordinates, we will be using the polar coordinates with an additional z-axis. Recall that we concluded that the double integral of the solid beneath the surface f of r and theta is with respect to r dr d theta. By adding the z component, we will be finding an infinitely small change in z in addition to the changes to r d r d theta. Hence, we can conclude that the dv, or this infinitesimally small change in the volume, equals r d z d r d theta. To calculate the volume of a solid with f of r and theta and z in a polar region, where r equals h theta is greater than r equals g theta, z will be the inner integral from the bottom surface, g of x and y, or rewritten in polar coordinates, g of r cosine theta and r sine theta, to the top surface, h of r cosine theta and r sine theta. r equals h theta will always be the upper bound, and r equals g of theta will always be the lower bound of the middle integral with respect to r. Also, the outer integral will have the bounds of the surface with respect to theta from alpha to beta. Note that any of the given variables can be constants, so you have to integrate accordingly. And always remember to draw a picture so that it is easier to define the bounds. I hope my video was helpful in your understanding on how to calculate the volume using triple integrals and cylindrical coordinates. Thanks for watching.